Hi guys, Luke from MGN here. Today we're gonna to look at Grifflands. It's a deck building roguelike game. It's just come out recently. It's left early access and we're gonna check it out. You're curious about whether it's any good, whether it's worth your time and money. Well, I'm gonna go through it from every angle now and then you'll know. Stick with me, we're gonna go through it right now. Welcome to our review of Grifflands, the deck building roguelike. As the name suggests, the game is all about grifting. If you take the gameplay and mechanics to something similar to Slay the Spire or Hearthstone single player content and add a sprinkle of underworld flair, boom, you've got Grifflands. Naturally, being a deck building game, the player will advance through levels of the game and gain cards, various augmentations that will help them for their next encounter. Curious about how the game stacks up against this weighty competition? Well, you're in the right place, because we're going to get there in a bit. The game is brought to the world by its developer and publisher Klee Entertainment, hope I'm saying that right, apologies if I'm not, owned by Tencent, the Chinese monolith of a gaming uh, entertainment company. Grifflands has been in early access for a few years now and has only recently just been uh, released in its full capacity here in Australia. So has the game been refined to an experience worth your time and money now that the full release is here? We're going to find out. We're going to dissect Grifflands from a variety of angles. We'll give each score a value from 10 and then give you the final verdict based on those scores. We're going to score Grifflands on. The first point, difficulty. Is the game challenging enough to maintain your interest throughout an play, in, in, entire playthrough? Especially those early stages where the cards are few and the enemies are pretty simple. Or is the game so easy that it becomes boring quickly with a lack of challenging depth? Are the varying difficulty modes, how are they handled? That's point one difficulty. And the second point we're going to judge it on is appearance. How does the game appear graphically? Is it visually appealing to the eye or does it appear rough or lackluster? We're going to go over how demanding the graphics are and whether there are any frame drops in sort of the more graphically intense sections of the game. The third point we're going to cover and judge Grifflands on is sound. That's going to include a few points in itself. That together will form the overall score for sound. The first point that makes up sound is sound effects, the second being soundtrack, and the third and last is voice acting, if there is any. How does the sound effect, uh, how do they hit the ear? Is the game soundtrack pleasant and fitting thematically? And how's the voice acting performances and casting? That's all sound. Point four is going to be the story, the game's story. Games similar to Grifflands in the genre have historically not really focused heavily on a story. Uh, and simply focused on making sure that the gameplay is solid without telling much of a tale. Does Grifflands fall into this crux? Are there story elements at least? Or is there a solid and interesting narrative behind the gameplay? We'll get there in point four, story. Point five, the second to last, is fun. Strip away all the finer points about this review and stick to simply the purpose of, the video, of video games in general, fun. Are you having fun when you sit down to play Grifflands? Can you play it for 20 minutes in a session can you have fun in a two hour session? Does the game feel good to play? It's as simple as that when we score the game on fun. The last point is price. Does the amount of time and enjoyment that you're going to get out of Grifflands stack up well against how much money you have to fork over? Is the game overpriced? Is it underpriced? Or have they gotten the pricing for the game pretty accurate? We'll see whether it's worth your time and money when we reach point six in price. Okay, we're gonna start with difficulty. That's point one, like I said. For the difficulty in Grifflands, I've decided to go for a 9 out of 10. The difficulty is easily measured and it's explained well. The game offers you the explanation of how it will handle the challenges it throws at you by treating the difficulty of the game as a gameplay mechanic, not just something that toggles up the health bars or damage done, like in a lot of other games. I like this. It simply doesn't happen often enough. That is dynamically using the difficulty to scale and engage with the player, rather than having them simply select an option that inorganically raises the challenge without any punishment or incentive to play the higher difficulties. It happens a lot, and I'm glad that Grifflands steers clear and actually treats difficulty as a tool. How does that work and what does it look like? I'm glad you asked. The higher or lower the difficulty is directly affects just how sort of pliable characters are to negotiate with. Whether that no negotiation be with the sword or with the tongue, it also affects what quest rewards you're going to get, uh, who you can bring along with you. I would liken the difficulty in Grifflands to a word in strictness. The lower the difficulty, the less strict your behavior need be, and the behavior of those characters opposite you will be in reaction. The higher, 
Well, you get the idea. They're more strict. The longer your playthrough goes, the stricter the game becomes with higher difficulty. I like this for a few reasons. A, like I said earlier, it's something that's done dynamically and uniquely with some forethought and provides a lot of interest. And B, it provides the player with enough leeway to get familiar with the game when they start, but then naturally builds up the challenge to maintain interest. So, for the execution, I can't help but score Grifflands well for difficulty. I didn't feel overwhelmed at any point when getting the first few encounters, but I also didn't get bored as the run went on, and my development of the my understanding of the development of the game became, you know, more deep. I wasn't overwhelmed at any stage there. So for difficulty, I have to go 9 from 10. Moving on to point 2, which, if you'll remember, is appearance. For that, I've decided to again go for a 9 from 10. Grifflands is graphically pretty undemanding, but that doesn't mean the game is visually unappealing or without artistic charm. Because there is one point to be made within the, the art within the game, it is really charming. I say this because the characters of the game are pretty difficult to not enjoy. They're all wacky, they're all quite interesting, but yet they manage to fit in thematically with the game. I imagine this is a pretty difficult thing to achieve when you're trying to have a constant visual theme between a roguish, sword-wielding desperado, a squid-faced alien with a mallet, but nevertheless they all do seem in place within the game, and then... and they're created not to give the game a lighter tone in juxtaposition with the activities. You, you know, you have the light-heartedness of the characters, but then you have the sort of darker tones of what you have to do with them. You might be trying to have a serious swindle operation going on, but you've still got a clumsy squid head to offset the tone. That's for the art, but for the meat and potatoes of how the game actually runs, like I mentioned, it's really undemanding. We played the game on a moderately powerful PC, and the game always felt really smooth and didn't ask over much of the GPU. Animations for the game are not overly flashy, but that doesn't necessarily detract from the score. If anything, it helps the game be easy to follow. There are a lot of mechanics, and there can be a lot of considerations. As such, you don't want a lot of visual clutter. The card and action animations are simple, but they're recognizable and serve their purpose. So overall, I'm going to give appearance a 9 like I said. The third point is sound. For sound, I'm going to give Grifflands 8 from 10. I'm glad that the game does indeed end up having voice acting, and it brings the game to life. I'm even more pleased to say that the people on distant planets don't speak English with North American accents. That's the kind of thing that happens in spacefaring games pretty often, and it's really addressed. How Grifland tiptoes this issue but allows the player to still comprehend what's going on is very The Sims-esque. Yes, the voice actors might be saying gibberish designed to emulate a foreign sort of alien language, but it's all given appropriate timing and tone so that you can infer from context and you get the subtitles as well. I like this a lot, it's done well, the game feels otherworldly without being confusing, so kudos to the vo voice actors and the decision makers behind the game for putting that feature together. The second point I'll make in regards to sound is the game's sound effects. I mentioned earlier that there can be a lot going on on the screen at any one time. I feel like sometimes the sound effects for these actions can get lost in one another, sometimes effects from cards and abilities will be quite alike or produced so close to one another that there can be a bit of audible clutter and it makes one sound effect quite difficult to differentiate from another. They're a little too alike and they come too rapidly to be so similar. And sound effects. Moving on to the game's soundtrack, of which I have pretty much nothing but praise for. The outlet for this aspect of sound is always going to impress. From the very first trailer, the, the, trailer, the first trailer's music is great. I'm happy to announce that it is translated from the hype building videos to the actual game itself. Each OST fits in thematically with the game, and even dynamically evolves depending on what's happening. It'll seamlessly transition the music depending on what occurs. As you push through phases of a boss fight, as you are harmed or you do major harm, the soundtrack will smoothly transition to match the pace and situation of your activity. That sound, overall, I'm going to give it an 8. Okay, moving on to the next point. I believe point 4 is story, and story I'm going to give, surprisingly, a 10 from 10. Admittedly, the competition for telling a good story in the genre isn't hard. If we're sticking to deck building roguish games, the largest competitors that come to mind, like I said earlier, obviously Slay the Spire and Hearthstone. Neither have the greatest of storytelling, despite having all the tools to effectively do so. They have interesting settings and characters, but they don't do much with them. 
That isn't the case for Grifflands. In fact, I might go in so far as to say that perhaps Grifflands was designed to buck this trend with the aim of introducing great story elements to the genre. Is that a bit of a reach? I don't know. Either way, pressing on. Each character that you can choose to play from will have their own personality, and whilst their motive behind their actions in games all revolves around selling their sword for as much dosh as possible, that doesn't necessarily mean that the experience is quite different from one play to another. There's plenty of lore within the game, and through the supplementary material if you want to go looking for it. The game doesn't feel bogged down for this though, you won't be button mashing through hours of dialogue and lore dumping just to get to some gameplay. It's woven cleverly throughout, and it's introduced well at your playthrough's inception. You're going to enjoy it, it's done in a crafty way, the writing is good so that you're not going to want to be button mashing through it, it's quite enjoyable. What sets Grifflands apart in a good way is that the story is pretty dynamic. It feels like it belongs with the rogue elements of the game. A card or ability choice can define the rest of your run and dramatically change how successful you are. What's great about Grifflands is that the same can be said for the story. Sparing an enemy or making a deal with the devil can create a butterfly effect for the rest of your run from a story perspective. Cards and story choices matter. And the fact that they're both in sync makes Grifflands stand out from the pack and earns it a 10 for its story. Okay, next point, point five, the second to last, is fun. And I've decided to give Grifflands a seven from 10 for fun. Grifflands has all the great elements to make a fun game. The writing is witty, the gameplay is entertaining, and it all comes together quite well. My praise for the game is quite obvious considering the points we've previously gone over. However, it doesn't have the longevity that I would have liked to have seen. It's all a fantastic experience. Your time with the game might just not be as long as you've come to expect from similar in the genre. Don't get me wrong, it's an absolute blast and the game certainly does get a check mark from me in regards to how fun it is, just not how long that fun lasts. The diversity in runs is there and so are the unlockables, everything you'd expect from a rogue card game. The deck building is solid and you feel like you make overall progress each time. The issue I have that there just isn't enough here at the full release, I had anticipated maybe an extra character or a lot more cards for those characters or some more diversity in builds when it comes to what's the best, but that's just not where we're at yet. You hit the brick wall of having everything unlocked and knowing what to do at every opportunity quite quickly, more probably more quickly than you were going to expect considering the depth of the game. It's just not there yet. I say yet because I fully anticipate DLC to solve this issue. I would love to see some more challenge modes from the game, a greater variety in playable characters, and some balances, patches to fix specific builds in the future. However, as I kind of want them now and have to wait for them, I can't help but give fun a score of 7. The game is genuinely super fun, it just doesn't sustain that long enough, and I think those kind of additives would help a lot. Okay, moving on to the last point, which is price. Price for Grifflands, I've decided to go 10 from 10. You might think that given my single complaint being that the game's longevity is not quite where you would expect it would be, that I would think the game's overpriced for the content. But simply put, it's just not. You're gonna still get plenty of playtime from the game and you're gonna love every second regardless even if it's not quite what you expected. But the fact that the game is only $28.95 AUD makes it pretty underpriced. Even if we take in the amount of time that you get from the game and halve it, I'd still say the Grifflands is underpriced. Why? Because the score isn't solely based on how much time you're going to get out of the experience, but how quality that time is as well. That's why I've scored Grifflands so high in this respect. Dollar for dollar, this is the best rogue deck building card game. This game has a better platform for a long-term experience than Slay the Spire does. It is a better experience at launch also. It's better written, it's better polished, it's much deeper. Everything about it is simply better. As such, if you're looking to get the best experience, this is the game you need to buy. And you know what? It's cheaper than its chief competitor in Slay the Spire. So being able to buy the better game at a lower cost earns Grifflands a 10 for its price. What does that mean the final verdict is? The final verdict is a nine from 10, almost perfect. All right, thanks for checking out our review. That's gonna wrap things up. If you've agreed or disagreed with any of the points we've made, 
or you just have your own two cents to add, we'd love to hear from you on the mgn.gg blog, our YouTube channel obviously, our new Twitter at MGN underscore TV, or our new Discord, all of the links for which are posted in the description of the video review. Thanks for checking out our review of Grifflands, just reminding you, it's a 9 out of 10.